Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I will, my talk is about SODIS enhancement technologies, pilot testing for developing countries. Uh, yeah, I, I work in Plataforma Solar de Almería. Just, just so you have an overlook where I'm working. I work in a solar institute. It's a research institute in the southeast of Spain, and we have different technologies to investigate different, uh, different ways to concentrate solar energy and produce electricity. And we have also other applications based on, um, oh, <laughs> I think I will <laughs> do that. Yeah, based on um, materials treatment, uh, water desalination. We work on water purification. This is where the group where I belong to and uh, energy efficiency in buildings. So this is a picture of a part of our solar pilot reactors. Since the beginning of the 90s, our group, led by Julian Blanco and Sisto Malato, have been developing different solutions for wastewater treatment and decontamination as, as a result of new lines of research. We're working also on solar water disinfection. So. Uh, this has been explained before by our colleague Tamar Kohn. So uh, what I'm going to tell you is that uh, what we need. So uh, uh, we, are, we work with, with the UV range of the solar spectrum. Of course, as it was explained before, uh, we are all aware that the, the main UV component is the UVA and every small proportion in the UVB. And this is uh, the, the part of the solar spectrum we are playing with. Um, this, is a, this is my point of view, but it's very similar to the, to the um, mechanism that were explained before in the previous talk about the different um, mechanisms of, of the different parts of the spectrum of, of the UVC, UVB, and UVA. Of course, what we want to promote is uh, the UVB and UVA part uh, processes generating radic uh, reactive oxygen species uh, with the help of some natural organic matter present in the water, like Tamar explained very well, or just by direct action of the UV photons directly in the in the cells or virus, etc. So the, there is a, the accumulative damage of solar photons uh, impacting bacteria cells. It will, will bring final and um, lethal and mutagenic damages and cell death. Uh, as, uh, as all of you know, um, SODIS is a technology that takes advantage of two, of two assets, the UVA income radiation and the synergistic effect of the nil heating of the solar radiation. Although, although it is also believed that some photo repair mechanisms occur uh, during, during solar inactivation, uh, what we know is that this is a very clear feature of a, a SODIS under natural conditions. The water temperature increases be between 20 to 55, and the total coliforms can, can decrease in a few hours to maybe six laws, eight laws, depending on the initial concentration. This is the evidence in the field. So um, what, what Ana Maria said this morning is that we all are uh, conscious that E. coli can be disinfected. So this was one of the control studies. So this picture is just uh, to show that E. coli is a very easy target. E. coli can, uh, can be treated with UVA. When I say UV, it's UVA, of course. Sorry, my glass and only have UV. It's solar UVA dose. Uh, so with this UVA dose, here you can see that E. coli is very sensitive to the treatment, but other microorganisms like Shigella uh, or Salmonella picinurium or Vipio cholera um, are more resistant. Um, if you go under natural, many of the studies that you find in the literature are not done in the, in the field. They are done with a very small volumes of water and under solar simulators. So to, to test for real, you have to go to real contaminated waters, real microorganisms, isolate them, and, um, and work with the, with the wild strains found in the nature. This, in this study, uh, we compare different um, Campylobacter genemi, Staphylococcus epidermis, and Pseudopathogenic E. coli, which is quite resistant compared with the others, and Yersinia enterocolitis and Bacillus subtilis. And of course, Bacillus subtilis is the most resistant, and at the moment, no one is 
contact with Polaris Infectia and many other technologies. Or, or, mm, yeah, what is SOBIS? You know what is SOBIS. <laughs> in widely explained. So I will, if you want to have <laughs> a look to the nice picture. So uh, this was recommended by the World Health Organization in, this, in 2005 after the, the tsunami in Asia as an intervention measure to provide safe water. And, has, and it's been used by around 5 billion people around the globe. So the negatives, uh, the positives and the negatives of service has been also described here. The way how we overcome will be different in this talk. The negative is that, that there is an uh, undesirable bacterial regrowth after the treatment. Why? Uh, uh, this depends on how, on how efficient was the treatment, how your methodology to measure this infection work was accurate enough, or uh, dependent or also on the water matrix or in the microorganism itself. So uh, you have to be very sure that you decrease the a number of logs enough, as much as possible, as much as your detection limit of your methods are, to guarantee safe water and to avoid any recovery. And of course, if there is organic matter in the water, there may be some recovery after a certain time after the treatment. Some pathogens are very resistant. Uh, the small water output uh, and is very small uh, and it's a, it's a problem. And there have been some attempts to develop uh, large volume systems, and it's what I want to show, but still there is some work, research work to be done before in, in before applying in the real, in real situation. This is only dependent on weather condition. That's it also this problem. Depends on the temperature and on the uh, on the sun, sunlight evaluation. But the reality is this one. This is the water uh, being treated by Sobi that at the primary school in the south of Uganda. And uh, the students uh, treat this water and after treatment they reduce it. So I'm sure I will be safer, but this is for start. Of course, it could be filtered, but this is what it, this is a real uh, experience. So um, what, uh, how do we how do we go into this problem? What are the, the things we want to, to use based on our knowledge to improve the solar disinfection with the actor at a reasonable cost? We, we want to maximize the collection of solar energy domes in, in a short time, to enhance the disinfection efficiency, especially against resistant pathogens, increase the output of treated water at a given solar exposure point, reduce the treatment time, of course, Reduce the user dependency of the process, utilize a uh, cheap and robust disinfection system, which may also be constructed with local materials without sophisticated technological needs, it's a lot, <laughs> and optimize photoreactor design taking into account the disinfection mechanism. It's very important you know the mechanism. That's why I was so interested in the talk of Thomas Hahn. It's very important to know when the, the killing effect occurs, how many photons do we need? Uh, is the accumulative damage uh, really accumulative or reversible? Depends on the region mm. or depends on the organic matter also. And so we need uh, uh, a lot of research and previous knowledge to design proper systems. <coughs> uh, so w when we do research about uh, solar reactors, we, we consider the following disinfection parameters um, as very important. The dark inactivation superimposed to solar disinfection and sometimes, I, although I'm not going to talk a lot about photocatalysis because this is not for drinking water, I will show you just one example so you, so you can see the enhancement just because uh, to show. Uh, also, it's an important thing to, to explore the, the, the reactor flow rate and the intermittence and intensity of the solar radiation, how the radiation is delivered into the system. The dose, the, the fluence of photons is not enough. So you have to know how it was delivered and, and how long was the treatment time? This is also very important. And the water temperature, the turbidity, bacterial concentration, chemical, all, all the other parameters that are set to the UV, UV system. And of course, the nature and the origin of, the, of the contamination. So we, we will mm, address four, four points. In the take advantage of the water temperature increase, although our system don't concentrate that high uh, amount of photons, we get an increase of temperature. Uh, we will increase also the solar UV collection. Uh, we, we can take advantage of some, of some photochemical processes in, a ver in very mild conditions and, uh, and explore new designs.
time concept and try to just think it is nearly accurate. Here you can see the profile of, uh, uh, here this is a reaction, and I will explain later why it was designed like that, but it's just uh, like a big bottle with a double parabolic uh, mirror uh, behind. So the idea is to collect all the diffuse UVA radiation into the tube, okay? And, um, and here, although you don't have uh, infrared concentration or high amount of photon, just concentration factor of one, uh, what you see is an increase of temperature that changes from 21 to 58 for 2D water, 13 ACU, and from 21 to 45. So at 45, solid is, uh, goes really fast compared to 20, as you can see, as, as you will see in another job. If we use uh, solar mirrors with a concentration factor of one, the, the or a concentration of 1.9, the increase in temperature, of course, uh, again, uh, behaves different with uh, the theoretic peaks, and, um, and they are higher for a higher concentration factor from 40 to 52, and from, from, from 20 to 42, so we got the next step. Okay, the second one. Here you can see in, the, uh, in that graph that the solar disinfection performance at 41 degrees uh, has a, a, a disinfection rate at uh, 52 Celsius, the disinfection rate is too much higher. So if in our lab, in, in a certain short time, you get to, to reach 45 or 50 Celsius, this is an advantage. It's not, uh, we, don't, we don't have to concentrate only on the solar UV collection. Uh, that's, uh, that graph is about, uh, shows the temperature, minimum and maximum and average during experiment done with that reactor in Uganda uh, during seven months. Here, there you can see that uh, at January, February, until July, that the average temperature uh, has in increased with the standard. Uh, the temperatures we reduced are in La Media were higher. Here, you can see also that uh, the temperature of the water uh, can in increase even the velocity of this infection or processes where we use photocatalysis, which is an inside particle, or we use uh, mild uh, conditions of photocatalysis and disinfection. In all cases, the higher temperature, the higher disinfection activity is was expected, of course. So another another way to enhance solar water disinfection could be photocatalysis, but this is not uh, very reliable for uh, drinking water because it's based on the use of uh, na in nanoparticles and adding uh, substances to the water. But here you can see what's the difference of disinfecting spores or fusaria without, with sunlight in the top of the line and with adding, when you have very rustic some microorganisms, you have to add a photocatalyst to get good results. Well, what about other solar photodisoxidation processes? Of course, natural water have, have unique acids, different substances like uh, Sama was shown before, um, and they, they can act as photosensitizer. There is also a, a very small amount of, I, of iron, and hydrogen peroxide is not present, but could be in very small amount. What, what, what I'm suggesting that very small amount of hydrogen peroxide, sunlight, and the present iron in the water may enhance very much solar disinfection. Of course, there is a lot to explore here, the toxicity about permeated amounts and everything, but the, 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 you know, it's like accelerating the solar disinfection mechanism inside the cells or the external damages using this kind of additive. Um, of course, there are other studies that, from the point of view of the chemical contaminant treatment, have, have proven that iron tree and iron two complexes the presence of UVA may generate irreversible radicals, or, uh, of course, the photosynthesis cycle will generate for sure irreversible radicals, or hydrogen peroxide with UVA will not generate irreversible radicals at this wavelength, because in the sunlight we don't have the wavelength that is with hydrogen peroxide, but hydrogen peroxide with the presence of sunlight will enhance very much the solar uh, disinfection at very small amounts of this, uh, at this, uh, mm -hmm. Here you can see, for example, the case of fusarium spores under sunlight that 
where we can touch it only is using only uh, soli, soli, the sunlight, these are the empty symbols. So at the same color, using just 10 milligrams per liter of hydrogen peroxide, you can see the change in the tendency from uh, lines that they don't show any disinfection to very rapid disinfection. You can see Anfusarium is very resistant and poor. Or uh, there, uh, in the other lab, there is an example of using iron free, just 2.5 milligrams per liter, 5 milligrams per liter of hydrogen peroxide, 2.5 milligrams per liter of iron free, and uh, the comparison with COVID. So here we insert that due to different, uh, of course it works different with bacteria and with spores of fusarium, but uh, there are ways with very mild conditions of uh, accelerate these processes. How do we enhance the solar energy income using solar mirrors? You, you have seen a couple of pictures already. So the concept of the bottle is just um, a flask. And if we use compound parabolic collectors, we can uh, put uh, or redirect all the UVA radiation into, into the tube. So here is an example of having yeah, the, the bottle or the tubes that were closed, they, they had no circulation in these pictures, they were uh, covered with cups and with a solar CPC mirror behind. And we were doing some research with them, with them and testing different cephalidium, uh, fusarium and Echerichia coli. And there you see a picture of the concentration factor too. It's, a, it's the same philosophy, it's just a CPC. So the, 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 the design of a compound parabolic collector is uh, just one, one con concentration factor of one with, a, with, an, an, with, an, this is, with an acceptance angle of 90 degrees and all direct and diffused solar photons will be redirected into the tube like you can see there in, the, in that uh, image. Okay. This is the ray facing of each CPC. So all what you measure with an environmental radiometer will be collected in the tube, like the tube. So uh, uh, um, regarding the concentration factor, we can use uh, CPC1 and CP CPC1.9. Why 1.9 could be two, but the, the more, the, the, the higher concentration factor you do, this is, these are a static system. They don't uh, follow or track the sun positions. So, um, if, if you want to, if you want to, to get more photons, what you have to do is to expand more the shape and, uh, and open more the parabola. And then you will have times of sunlight that you will not collect. So there is a positive and a negative depending on the concentration factor. So 1.9 is, is enough to get mm, at least six or eight hours depending on the location of direct sunlight, but then you will have many shadows or you will have to re the, the, the system. Here, uh, what's the enhancement of CPC with COVID? Uh, with that configuration, we test it uh, for E. coli uh, in well water um, in, in a normal day, and we compare experiments with bottle, a tube without any mirror, and the tube with the CPC mirror. So the advantage is just half an hour on the treatment, it's not so much. But the, the, the benefit comes when you test the systems in cloudy days. In cloudy days, without CPC, you will get no disinfection. And uh, with using an old mirror, very, how do you say, uh, scratched and old, uh, three years old, and a new CPC, you will get the advantage of reach the detection limit of, of uh, in this case, in this experiment, and of course, make it uh, faster, the disinfection. Uh, so what, what, you, what you need with the bottle, with the PET bottle, is around three hours, and what you need with the CPC is one hour and a half to run it. So um, wh what is the effect of having uh, complete, complete sunshine or complete uh, or cloudy days? So when you don't have any, any photocatalyst, it's solid, the red line, so the, the disinfection is really poor in this, we have an Anton Celonic species, experiment, but um, and in cloudy days, you have really no disinfection. So it's clear that we have a very, of course, we have a very high dependence on the number of photons from the those who live in the system. How do we speak in solar energy about the number of photons? Because the photon group should, if you use a 
elementary, or you can talk about in terms of energy in the UVA range where you're measuring with your equipment. Um, and um, it depends on how the uh, velocity of, of the treatment is, is correlated with the time or with the total number of photons. So you can use the, so you can use the cumulative UV energy during the exposure or the UV dose you see here in, in the UV one series. Okay? So the thing is that when you don't know the mechanism, you cannot marry with any of those parameters because the if you make a damage and the, if, the, if the flow of the water is disinfected, and then they circulate in that area and they recover or they, I don't know, develop any recovery mechanism and they come back and they, then the, the proportionality of number of photons to the disinfection effect is not that clear, it's not like that. It depends also on the total treatment time you have applied. So it's not only a matter of number of photons. Why? Because they are not static systems. You are not thinking of static. You know, you will see why I'm saying that. Uh, this is an example. This is a graph of my colleague Cesar Pulgarin in Lausanne. He did uh, the same energy delivery in a system. Of con the blue line is continuous irradiation with the same amount of photons as the red line. And the red line was uh, intermittently exposed. We did something similar. But we didn't know, but we did some th something similar. We used uh, a CPC system without flow rate, the, the red line, zero liters per minute, perfect disinfection. Then we include flow rate. We want to make flow systems to canalize a large amount of water and treat larger volumes. So what do we find in the green and, and purple line? We observe that the disinfection is not working. Why well, find delivering the system three times more energy than the, the perfect per minute? So we, we, we get that is because um, irrespective of the amount of energy, uh, what you need is to deliver an uninterrupted energy dose to get a lethal effect and not permit the bacteria to recover or whatever they do. So you don't have residual bacteria concentration in a flow rate experiment. So at the even time point, there, there needs to be maximum exposure of bacteria to to UV to ensure an activation compared with having bacteria exposed due to lethal dose over a long period of time. Maybe this activates the e in the UV photofilter mechanism. But we, we didn't do studies in this uh, in the sense to see if uh, we were doing uh, showing this in, in activation and repair mechanism. So the concept design of reactors for solar water disinfection could be static batch if the treatment time is <laughs> long, between 20 to 30 minutes, or continuous flow systems with residence times equal to the required to receive the lethal UV dose in case we have more sensitive microorganisms. Okay? Here is another example of what lethal UV dose. When we, when we apply uh, a low amount of energy, the, the inactivation uh, during exposure is partial. And then the inactivation keeps going after the treatment. If you deliver a higher uh, in dose, the inactivation will be faster, but the, the killing after the treatment also. So there is an accumulative damage. So uh, to, to design a good solid reactor, you have to characterize very well with that water and with that microorganism, what is the amount of energy you require to, to get inactivation or not. In this case, it was a, it was a ceaseless low decrease in our, our main answer. In, uh, for irradiance, uh, we did uh, many experiments on this, and we observed that between 14 and 40 watts per square meter on the UVA radiation, uh, there was a minimum uninterrupted UV dose needed for complete inactivation. And that's why we work with this static batch system. But for big volumes, we have big volumes, this is very difficult, so we have to think about new ideas. So we developed this and we test it in, in Almeria, in our institute, and also in Havana. And here you can see the behavior of disinfecting water. The two lines is comparing a 2.5 liter tube and a 25 liter big tube. And here you can see uh, similar behaviors and in terms of, of the flows. And then uh, at the end of six hours treatment, we get to, to 
um, the detection limit for sunny conditions, and four, four log reduction in cloudy conditions. Uh, um, yes, this, this system was also tested in Uganda, and was tested for disinfection of um, harvested rainwater. So it was, uh, was evaluated for six, six months, looking for um, as much as possible log reduction, starting at, at 10 to the 6, more or less. So in sunny conditions, the bacteria were completely eliminated within five hours. And, um, and for um, turbid water with 100 MCU, uh, we required around seven hours to decrease uh, six logs. And on cloudy days, uh, only three logs were uh, were achieved, and a second day of exposure was recommended. Although one never knows, they will. This is uh, the performance of this system for um, filter for even carbon in in different uh, turbidity waters, zero, five, and thirty MCUs. And here you can see the decrease in viability of filter for even, and how the more the more turbid is the water less efficiency has, but the decrease in infectivity decreases from 90% to 20%. And these measures are done with a um, PI viability test. These are not in vivo tests, but probably the infectivity at the end of the experiment is quite, quite low. Um, we also use this system to disinfect um, several types of uh, water, and in, in this case was effluent of an urban wastewater. And here we measure these are the pink lines are the real wastewater. That's why the concentration of E. coli was quite low compared with the others. The others were artificial, digital water, well water, and simulated effluent of a municipal wastewater treatment plant. And the pink ones, they are all replicas. That's why we have double lines. And the pink ones are disinfectant groups of, of uh, different days of experiments of real effluent of wastewater treatment plant. Here you can see, uh, and, and also we have the the minimum and maximum temperatures reached during the process. So, um, and on the top, you have the, the scale time of exposure. It de depends on our evaluation measurements. So, uh, the results are not so bad, very similar to PET bottle, but with uh, 10 times more volume. But, when you, pu you put in the system, you add uh, five and 10 milligrams per liter of, of hydrogen peroxide, what you have, here, if you compare this study with uh, the, the adding of hydrogen peroxide, you see uh, a decrease on the treatment time, quite important. So what we did here is to, is to evaluate this uh, treatment to uh, decrease the number of, and uh, the log of echo as much as possible to reduce this water in irrigation uh, for irrigation purposes. And of course, we monitor the concentration of hydrogen peroxide and we didn't observe uh, residual concentrations because they, uh, it reacted with the organic matter present in this water. Here is another concept. It's called, uh, we call it the sequential batch reactor. But the point is not to replicate with uh, sublethal doses. We decided to, to, to put some water in, in the tube and, and let the, the water to flow uh, at a flow rate that permits that the water at the end of the tube has received a lot of like the Cantara tool system, but without any lamp. And of course, at lower flow rate because the treatment time is very similar, I think. And uh, here, so the, the system was provided with an automatic system controlled by, by UVA feedback sensor, uh, um, incorporates the PPC with, with the concentration factor 1.9 to decrease <coughs> the, the time of exposure and receive the same energy and to ensure um, that the, 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 the predator mine, the, the amount we know of UV dose, we know that the bacteria may receive, is received in the system, okay? Here, uh, here is the system, how we test it. We have a, a very sticky UV sensor to open two valves that were also cheap and the, and the, and the system was um, circulated yes, by, by gravity from one plant to the other plant. And here, we compare the disinfection behavior using a PPC one and the, the CPC 1.9. So in, in one hour exposure, we multiply the amount of energy received in the system by nearly two, and that's why the disinfection was 
stop uh, fast and in one hour the the, the water was taken. <coughs> if we think about recirculated batch reactors, the thing is more complicated and we have to think about using other um, oxidant activities like uh, uh, I don't know either the radical or singlet oxygen or um, because because of the residual concentrations you find when you have bodies in recirculation. Here I'm showing just some pictures of um, some prototypes that we developed in another in, in some European project years ago. And they were studied in, in Morocco, in, in Egypt, in Mexico, in Argentina, and they were more based on photocatalysis. And uh, this is just the final um, result example of using these flow reactors with the in comparing different oxidation analogies. Uh, here uh, we, we did um, the disinfection of real effluents, and the, uh, we observed the E. coli present in this, uh, in this water, somatic coliphase, uh, RNA bacteriophase, and also sulfide uh, redistributive stevia in this water. And here you can see that solar radiation, the black line, for example, the E. coli, takes very long time to, to reach the detection limit. The stevia is very resistant. Microorganisms, you have these very different sensitivities. And of course, when you have hydrogen peroxide that is neutral pH photosynthesis, the, the disinfection results, all of them uh, enhance uh, quite more. And this is just a picture. This is courtesy of my colleague Lawrence Hill. They used this previously, uh, years ago, they installed in Kenya in a rural community. Uh, we don't have results on this, but it was a nice. I, I don't know, I think I take too long, I don't know if there is, and what I, I wanted to, just to highlight, it's very important to evaluate parameters like flow rate, total, the total volume of water, temperature, and the solar energy when, when you attend the task of upscaling studies, and you have to, to be very aware of the processes that may happen in big systems where flows involved and other things. Um, and if it is in real water, the, the problems become a high risk. Characterizing the uninterrupted solar UV dose required for, for uh, disinfection, I think it's very important. And uh, CPC has been proven to be uh, good enhancement for solids. Um, yeah. And we have done a lot of work on CPC simplified by solution. Thank you very much. for solar-based treatments. Anybody have any questions for Pilar? Yeah. A lot of the I don't have that information, but just for the color, I think it should be higher than 100. Yeah, in the hundreds for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, because the, the recommended of SODIS is to filter the water until you, you have done your SODIS above 30 NTUs. So there, there are. Ma there is no more research. I don't think there is much research about 30 or 100 NTUs. Otherwise, it's recommended filtration. If the temperature gets high enough, you can have any amount of turbidity, and you're still going to disinfect the water. So that won't be nice to drink, maybe, but it would be could be disinfected still. Right? If you still get the high enough temperature, it's, even with yeah. turbidity, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, 
with higher turbidity, you absorb more infrared, and that's why the system goes warmer. Um, exact correlation, I'm not sure, but what is sure is that you get at least, I showed my, my first pictures, five degrees more than very clear waters. And the, and the thermal contribution for sodis of that part, you, you see in the results. But on the contrary, you are decreasing the UVA part. Okay, thank you, Pilar, again.